Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ, all of you. Today, our topic is about politics and what's going on in Iran. Uh, you know, like uh, <clears throat> all of us, we watch news and we know nothing except what we see in the news. But what we see in the news usually is not really what's happening in the ground. Uh, let us say the news always have a propaganda and have an agenda. No matter the news is coming from who. When the news is coming from the American, the American, they have their own way to say the news. When the news is coming from the people of Iran in the street, they have their own way to say the news. And when the news comes from the government of Iran, they have their propaganda to say the news. So news never and was never just a pure news. Uh, to make it simple for you, if uh, if somebody he wanna he wanna point his finger at the Jews, he will say a Jew did, you know. He don't say a person his name etc. So he wanna point to you that he is a Jew. This is a propaganda, you know. Unless this Jew he did it in the name of his religion, then okay, well there's it makes sense. So you say a Jew because of his religion he did that what he did, but to say he's a Jew when he is just like anybody. And he did not even maybe he don't believe in Judaism. So the news is no different. <clears throat> the news always have title, and everyone he's, he make his own title. If you read the titles in the front of us, Iran supreme leaders seek to calm deadly anger over fuel, but he did not really do that. Actually, he agree with the government decision. What those people are talking about hmm. uh, actually <clears throat> the government of Iran is running by this guy the big mullah who supposedly represent the God of Islam on earth who is according to the Shia I believe he is uh, supreme he is like God he don't make mistakes he don't make errors uh, in Arabic we call it masoom masoom which means perfect that's why they call them ayah when you see somebody uh, speaking about uh, Al Khomeini, what they say? They say ayah. Ayah uh, mean a sign from God, something perfect. So those are people who believe Shia. That those yes, they are a human. Ayat is signs. So all those sheikhs who they have title before their name. Ayah, that's mean he is supreme. That's mean nobody can kill him. When I say nobody can kill him, doesn't mean he cannot, cannot be killed. No, it's mean he is he's protected by the law. He's above the law. He's perfect. He's from God. So this man who is controlling Iran, <coughs> Khamenei, Khamenei. His name start by ayah, but he is not the only ayah, but he is the highest ayah for Iran. So they take advantage of the belief of the Shia, which is the majority belief of the Iranian uh, population. And then they try to use that belief, as usual, to control the crowd. The same as certain time the church, the Christian, sadly, they used you know, to use the church to control the crowd for the benefit of politician, corrupt politician. Or corrupt bishop Islam is no different Islam is more corrupt than the corruption itself it's not just individual it's corrupt the idea they believe is corrupt the idea that there's a guy who is above and he is from God and he is uh, he don't do wrong that by itself is a story <clears throat> so if we if we look around us what the news saying to us that the protesters are protesting against fuel price if you go to uh, twitter you will see the same story you know of uh, fuel price okay what is it really against the fuel price is it is it this is what's happening you see the 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 story always is not really uh, in full uh, image it's just what you what you saw what you heard what they say but the story is more than this you know those people they are under oppress op oppression for more than 40 years and the what they want they want the freedom of a speech they want the freedom of life not only gas 
Actually, most of them, they are not driving fancy cars to worry about gas. So why revolution happened? Because of the Gaza price. But the Gaza price is a sign that this government went bankrupt, totally bankrupt, and there's nothing left. To the point that even the gas price, which is number one product Iran produce, they cannot afford to keep it in the normal price. Remember, Iran is a country which sell gas, not a country buy gas. Actually, it's number one income for Iran. So how in the world, you know, your number one income is gas, and yet you cannot give it to your own citizen cheapest than the market you sell yourself. Like they want to sell it for half the price to abroad, but they want to give it twice the price of what it sold abro abroad. The reason for this, <clears throat> this government is collapsing and they are out of money. And they want to, okay, they give them salary. They have to give salary for those uh, uh, citizen. So they give you the salary in the right hand and they take it back in the left hand. This is the whole story, you know, behind this. We give you, we give you a salary, but then we take it back. We fool you. We say, okay, here we go. I'm going to give you a $500 salary. They give it to you in the right hand, and then in the left hand, you spend it before you arrive home to buy some grocery. So we increase the prices <clears throat> on everything. And the gas price here is not impacting the, those who own private cars. It's impacting the transportation. You know, those are not really, uh, uh, you know, I don't think many of them, they own cars. They are living really a, a very a standard life. But that means everything, the fuel, the fuel is up. That's mean the bread will be up. That's mean uh, uh, everything you buy from the market is going to be up. Because if you will control all industries, food industry, you name it. So when we increase the fuel in a country which sell nothing but fuel, that is a very clear sign of collapsing. The country is collapsing. Now, uh, you know, in the Middle East, there's two things re revoke uh, a human being there. You know, I am a Middle Eastern, as you know, either religion or hunger. One of two, religion or hunger. In this case, it's both. The religion is abusing the citizen as usual. This is, this is, the, this is the purpose of Islam, actually, is to control and to abuse. Few people, they call themselves caliphate, leaders, companions, uh, descendant of the prophet, they abuse the rest. If you go to the kingdom of Jordan, which is supposedly very friend country or a friend uh, 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 in the scale of USA, a friendly country to USA, actually all the royal family of the Jordanian government, royal family, they are uh, they, they got trained and they are members of the CIA. And I'm not making conspiracy. Actually, if you remember when one of Al Qaeda he explored himself in Afghanistan, one of the royal family, he is a prince. He was injured with two other <coughs> CIA agents because he was working with them. So all of them, they are dictators. All of them, they are the same. All of them, they use religion. The royal family of Jordan, they use the name of God and the name of the prophet to say, okay, we are from the family of the prophet. So we have to be the rulers. So you have to obey us. You see, we are from God. The prophet, the prophet himself is our grandfather. What's wrong with you? So they used that, and actually the first one who used that method, it was the British intelligence. When, uh, in, in the end of the World War II, the British intelligence, they brought somebody, his name is Sharif Hussein. They brought him from Mecca, and he is the grandfather of the King Hussein. And then they made him a caliphate, a king for Syria, Jordan, Iraq. It is the British government, it's not anyone. All those government you see there is made by the British government. The founder of them, the, the, the royal family of Saudi Arabia, the royal family of Kuwait, the royal family of uh, Emirates, Bahrain, Qatar, Jordan, you name it. I mean, all of them. 
they are nothing nothing but her majesty the queen agents and they and the western intelligently they learn that those countries people there they are so much in the control of religion so they said okay let us control them by their religion so we will bring them a guy he worked for us and he is going to be our guy and he controlled them so they are happy we are happy and they are under our control the same exactly the British intelligent they did in uh, India they brought uh, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam the founder of Ahmadiyya he was working for them and they told him claim to be the Messiah and what is the purpose of this so Ahmad Mirza Ghulam will say to the Ahmadiyya people you can join the you, you join the, the, the her queen her majesty army so it is the control and now they have a believers and believers they will obey so now he they have Muslims they join the British army which they are desperately they are in need this is always what they do now going back to Iran Iran is no different Iran is no different this time Iran supposedly they made a revolution and they don't want USA and they don't want the to be controlled by uh, the British intelligence we are going to control ourselves and we will use the same method the British intelligence they used to use we bring them a bunch of mullahs and we say to them that those mullahs are independent they are not under the the, 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 the command of a France or England or USA they are independent they speak for you they speak for God and this is how we can control them this time it was the French intelligence not the British intelligence the French intelligence they hosted Al Khomeini for many years in France they paid for him a salary free apartment free place free uh, 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 like uh, health insurance free protection etc until time came to put Al Khomeini as a ruler for Iran and this is why until now France have a very 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 special place in Iran and I'm talking about Iran as a government of the mullah you see Iran will never say one negative word against France because this is the country who made the ayah this is the country who made the Khomeini this is the country who preserve their dummy for the right time so those countries always they have an agenda and they use this agenda this is why you see in England England is the biggest terrorist nest in the world all terrorists who they are from Al-Qaeda from ISIS from Mujahideen you name it if they want to seek refugee they go to England what is the purpose so we can use them one day against our enemies so we bring them here we host them we control them and one day we will unleash them but you know this story is not working anymore because now those who they brought them to their country to unleash them against their enemies they are unleashed against them and this is exactly what happened in 9 11 and what happened in England attacks so they thought they can use those terrorists for their agenda and those terrorists they will be lawful and they will be loyal to their masters but those terrorists they have no you know I mean they are just the same as you are using them they are using you this is the this is the idea this is what Muhammad did Muhammad he signed a peace agreement with the kuffar just to use them until he is ready to kill them so they have their own belief and those Western they are not understanding what the belief is so what we will see here <coughs> Uh, that the supreme leader of Iran, Al Khomeini, or sorry, Khamenei, he is using his authority, and because people believe that he is the highest, he is God in earth. But obviously, in the ground, those things is not working no more. You see, you can control people in the beginning of the revolution, but by time they will notice that you are the same as the king who was here before you are corrupt you are false you are a liar this government is doing nothing but just giving favor to this and that if you are in connection with the regime you get a job if you are not you don't get a job 
uh, your qualification qualification as an education it doesn't matter it is about how much connection you have in this corrupt government the same exactly what happened in Egypt where the Egyptian they voted for the Muslim Brotherhood they voted for them and the Muslim Brotherhood they hold the government in their hand and after less than a year the Egyptian they found that Muslim Brotherhood is more corrupt than the corrupt itself than the devil himself so more than 30 million march in the street and for sure the march there was not too much innocent I mean there is there is hands from outside playing with this but still the anger is they use the outside hands always they use the anger of the local population so the anger is exist the corruption is exist but then get support from outside and then revolution happen now here the question is what's happening right now in Iran is it is it going to get support from the outside hands so this revolution can take effect and make a change that is in the hand of people who they are in charge like USA like England like etc if they are really willing to support they can as an example uh, you know in order to control this uh, this uh, revolution they shut down uh, the internet <clears throat> all right uh, so the internet in Iran has been shut down for the for the next 24 hours for security reasons all right uh, you see the question there CNN why isn't this being talked about do you notice CNN why isn't this being talked about so in the West there is people they are not really in favor of revolution in Iran there is something fishy if the Western really and I'm now for sure I'm not saying that CNN is the government but CNN is one of the hands to destroy or to build but mostly is to destroy CNN is a very corrupt station and CNA CNN is a very very untruthful station so how come the untruthful station they don't use the truthful news because we as we say this is an untruthful station they are focusing in Trump they don't want to talk about Iran from the morning until night until they shut down Trump 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 impeachment of Trump they have nothing to say except Trump but if you think about it all this revolution happened because of Trump so I may myself I call it the revolution of a Trump because if not a Trump but the sanctions on Iran this will not be happening you see Obama he gave billions of dollars to Iran he gave them an agreement which is a price test they can buy anything they can buy weapon with that money the same money he gave them he gave them an agreement they can make weapon as much as they want with no limitation just don't make nuke that's all he opened the gates for them to buy and this is a terrorist organization that Iran is a terrorist I'm talking about the government is a terrorist organization so how in the world you give them all as the same as imagine Trump he says to Al-Qaeda I will make an agreement with you you can buy all kind of weapon you can make all kind of weapon except nuke but Al-Qaeda still Al-Qaeda so this is exactly what happened by the agreement between Obama and Iran so Iran instead of collapsing more than 10 years ago Obama he gave them a big finally they were like suffocating and they cannot breathe no more and then Obama he gave them that agreement so they breathe now and they are alive and they are strong and the Iranian government is exactly the same as the communist in the time of the Soviet Union the difference is those are religious those are communist but if you think about it one of the reasons of the collapse of the Soviet Union that Soviet Union was spending more money abroad from spending inside the country as an example I remember when I was in the Middle East there were many countries in the Middle East Soviet Union give a scholarship for their children to go and study in Moscow for free and who pay for it the people of Soviet Union 
and they are hoping that by bringing your child there you join they will make you join the the Communist Party and then you go back to your country and then you establish a branch for the Communist Party so this is what the agenda and the propaganda Iran they do the same most of their money are going into Syria into Yemen into uh, uh, Africa middle of Africa there's many countries of Africa even they have now camps of a training for Hezbollah in Venezuela so they have a lot of money for activities have nothing to do with the Iranian abroad but the Iranian themselves they don't receive that money so the reasoning for the collapse of the Soviet Union is exists inside Iran right now that the people inside are ignored and they are spending their money for their political agenda to spread Shiaism in other countries and to establish Hezbollah in many other countries so I can say that the Iranian government they work hard really to spread their authority all over the Middle East but by doing that they risk a lot they are now bankrupt the one who pay for the salary of every member of Hezbollah in Lebanon is Iran so we have more than a million Lebanese in Lebanon every month they don't do they don't work they have their salary coming from Iran the same in Syria the same in Yemen the same in many countries now how much money this country have or has to spend there's limit and now the sanctions of Trump came before a lot of money coming from the oil so okay we can give 1 billion to Lebanon we can give 2 billion to Syria we can give 3 billion to Yemen because we have too many billions but now no more billions it's bankrupt time and now the Iranian government they shut down the internet as you see but USA have the ability to open the internet for them so the question is is it Trump going to make a smart decision and give the Iranian free internet by using the unlimited satellite number we have there because they can give them free internet they can you see they can just unlock you know internet is something in like when you have your Wi-Fi you know what Wi-Fi is is Wi-Fi crossing the wall and the border yes there's nobody can stop the Wi-Fi so they can do the same by supplying the Iranian by internet and that will be a big hand because you see those people they don't trust anything they don't trust phone to call because government are watching recording their voices which means using the phone is the way to go to jail and maybe execute it the only thing they can be they feel secure with is to use the internet which is not under the control of the Iranian government especially if they use applications which cannot be filtered by the government of Iran you know what I mean so if USA really want this revolution to success and I don't think so you see it might be the appearance that USA they want Iran revolution to be destroyed this uh, this Islamic government but you know if you if you, if you think carefully about it I don't think so because this Islamic government uh, all Islamic government they serve the West all of them they serve them in the purpose and what is the purpose to keep those people living in the cave time Maybe I should make uh, more explanation. Let me see how I can do that. <clears throat> Just to show you that it's, things is not what you see in TV, and it's not what you what you hear. Things is far, far from what you see. All right. I will give you an example this is Israel this is Jordan and this is Lebanon Lebanon was number one competition for tourism in the whole Mediterranean I even mean, actually they used to beat even Greece imagine and for sure they beat Jerusalem and Israel so 
having Lebanon the way it is today serve Israel 100% so tourism became one of the biggest income of Israel every Christian want to go to Israel security is very important who want to go to Lebanon nobody who want to go to an area controlled by Hezbollah you jump in the airport you find yourself in the middle of Hezbollah territory and you can be arrested by Hezbollah the police there they have no authority in that area they can't even save you so what look like the enemy it can be the best friend to make it more clear having the enemy which is called Hezbollah in Lebanon flourishing and taking over Lebanon it is it's not going to hurt Israel no it will not because Hezbollah they knew their limit and they are a bunch of potatoes when it's come to the power of Israel the Israeli they can smash them if they want anytime literally they can smash the whole force of Hezbollah in very short time so why didn't do it because that will serve the purpose keep them there they cannot do anything they will not take over the country we will keep them checked in the point at the same time they will bring all the tourism to our country because nobody want to go to a country is called Lebanon which is so beautiful country the only problem with it there's no security and security scared terrorism you know terrorism so this is an example of how the enemy can be our friend even though the enemy is not our friend they don't mean to be but this is how we can use them to be our friend for our benefit so we have a bunch of terrorists in this area and this those terrorists we can destroy them but we will not and we will keep them there for a reason and they help us they help the economy as simple as that same time they will keep this country never being going to be stable again and this is true Lebanon will never be stable again as long as Hezbollah exist so money will come to Israel money will go out of Lebanon coming everywhere in the world except to Lebanon Lebanese themselves they flee Lebanon because Lebanon became a country controlled by Hezbollah and security is not exist and jobs are not there and Hezbollah now actually number one uh, business they do uh, additional to taking money from Iran is this you know selling and uh, and the growing drugs hashish and cocaine and heroin they are like Taliban so this is what the enemy can do to help Israel what about Iran it's the same it's exactly the same if USA get rid of Iran and when we say Iran we're talking about the government of Iran not the people of Iran so if we get rid of Iran well that's mean this area will be stable and the Saudi they will feel secure Emirat will be secure and everybody will be secure that's it there's no war so taking off the Iranian government which is here this is Iran will make Saudi do not need USA protection will make Qatar do not need USA protection Imara do not need USA protection and when we say protection mean not only they will have American force on the ground that's mean they have to buy the American weapon which is trillions of dollars not billions those are number one buyers for weapon in the world because they fear for their security they have no security actually all those countries their security literally is in the hand of America so if USA get rid of the regime of Iran here then those people here will not buy weapon from USA they will say bye bye USA we do not need you mm, nice to meet you hmm? we will spend our money in something else 
and that is not right for America so it is a necessity to have a regime like Hezbollah regime in Iran for USA <laughs> it might be weird right it sounds strange like you know if you think about it this uh, uh, Trump he is but but in sanctions no the sanctions is not to make the country uh, the, the the government really collapse is to make them to sign an agreement stay there we want you to stay there but by agreement that you will not do this you will not do that and you will not attack you you will not send money to anyone to support Israel that's it and then here you can rule as much as you want for one million year from now actually we like you we love you you know Trump he said it actually many times I don't want the Iranian government a, a, a regime to collapse he don't want he want them to stay so they can make money for America you know what I mean so the appearance is that USA is against Iran but if you go into details you will see that Iran is making a great service to USA wonderful service and not only that look how many of you heard that the Israeli they met with many Arab leaders in the last few years you heard in the news right if we go right now and search in the news about how things is changing those Arab who used to be Uh, enemy for Israel you see there's tons of titles and the plan is very simple this is Reuter US meeting in Middle East bring together Israel Gulf Arab states so what they want to do they want to make uh, a club and this club defend each other the members and this club contain Israel so now 10 years ago Israel was our enemy today Israel is our friend and not only that all of us we are enemy of Iran <laughs> you know what I mean it's funny isn't it but this is how it is because of Iran because of Iran today Israel became a friend to those Arab because now they don't fear Israel because Israel is not Israel proven that they are, they are they are not planning to attack anyone they don't want to attack anyone but Iranian are scary so now Saudi Arabia had many meeting with Israeli official And they are already signing many agreements. Qatar, Emirat, Kuwait. Who's left? And for sure, Oman. I don't know if you remember the visit of Oman, the visit of Netanyahu to Oman, to the Sultan of Oman. So those who were enemy to Israel today became. A very close beautiful friends to Israel because of the help of Iran so do you see how it is helpful to have an Iranian regime like this helpful to Israel helpful to USA for Israel is about money sorry about about security so now the Saudi they will not consider the Israeli enemy the, all those countries and that's mean uh, 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 those who they are here in this area in Gaza they will not get the support as before a lot of money coming from the Gulf because the war which is always they are launching against Israel here is coming from the money here this is the money this is where the money is coming from especially from Qatar so if those countries became in the pocket of Israel 
then those terrorists in this area of Israel they will die because all of terrorism is about the drugs money women this is the only source for them of income and this is why I say that this revolution now I don't think it's for the benefit of USA or Israel that the regime of Iran would collapse so I would not be surprised if really they give them a hand to stay it sounds crazy to say so right because in Iran they keep saying death to America death to Israel but they never shot a bullet at Israel so <laughs> let them say it as long as long they like everybody knows even the president of Iran he says this is for the local use which means for the local propaganda so I say that this revolution it's very much legitimate people are hungry people they are suffering people they want to get rid of this regime but it's not America who want to get rid of the regime this is why America and Israel will not give them a hand for if this regime is gone then everything in the Middle East will change and the change will not be for the benefit of USA financially and will not be for the benefit of Israel in security way because now you see if we take this enemy from here for the Arab if we say here Arab those people are not your enemy no more and they are going to sign a peace a peace agreement with you so now what will happen instead of all the arrows of all those government are going to Iran now they will go to Israel you know what I mean because those countries cannot live in peace anyway they have always to find an enemy enemy will unify them peace will destroy them and this is the purpose actually of screaming death to America death to Israel in Iran because this regime if there is no enemies this regime will collapse the reason those people they are saying okay we can handle it okay we can stay there's no enough food there's no enough money there's no enough oil but but this is a rich country just because they say don't you see we are fighting everybody don't you see we have sanctions on us don't you see um, death to America death to Israel so having an enemy is a necessity to survive so the necessity of surviving in Iran became like a bloodline for surviving in Israel because now all those Arab who hate Israel to death they are changing their mind and they are accepting Israel to be a friend which can even protect them not only can be a friend actually the purpose of this uh, uh, good relationship with Israel is Israel can protect us against Iran we cannot protect ourselves from Iran but Israel can Israel is very powerful is way powerful than all those countries together so those countries now they are saying to themselves we cannot trust mr. Trump alone we have to support ourselves with bigger forces which is in the area not a bunch of soldiers in the ground in Saudi Arabia from America few hundreds or thousand or two thousand here we have a real army which is extremely an enemy to the army of Iran so we can trust that they are really an enemy for this enemy and this is how it work the enemy of my enemy is my friend <laughs> I don't know if I make it complicated for you but this is how it is my friend so I am I'm going to say that this revolution can destroy the regime of Iran if USA and Israel want that regime to be destroyed but I am saying I don't think so I don't think Israel they want this regime to be destroyed I don't think Trump he want this regime to be destroyed or what they want from this regime that you will sign an agreement that you have nothing to do with Israel you will not support any force against Israel and you will not support any force against USA 
and the rest go for it they just want an agreement agreement which can be controlled so they will have a supervision over it so they will check what they are making the weapon they are what kind of weapon they are making they will add weapon they will add, add we weapon to the uh, agreement the kind which will not be able to hurt Israel so they will make Iran sign agreement that if you make a weapon the weapon shall not reach Israel which means the limited of it maybe at the say stop here in this area here you cannot have a weapon will go all the way to Israel the limit have to be changed if we sign this agreement stay in Iran and rule as much as you want right so we can say <clears throat> Uh, we can say that all of this game from Trump against Iran is just for the benefit of two things USA interest and Israel security the rest is not important the rest is not even exist I don't think USA care for the Iranian I don't think the Israeli care for the Iranian I don't think anybody in the world care for the Iranian except the Iranian. What they care for is the result of having this regime. And this regime is a is a priceless to USA. This regime made USA make trillions of dollars. And having this regime stay in is very important to USA otherwise those countries Kuwait Saudi Arabia Bahrain Qatar Emirat Oman Yemen all of them they will not be in need to USA so they have to protect actually the regime in Iran actually uh, you know I believe strongly that when the, the mullahs in Iran they took over in the revolution the government I believe that this is all done by the help of the CIA it's a long-term plan we create an enemy here enemy for Saudi Arabia Emirat Qatar Bahrain all the money all this is all money the same as when they created Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein was no one. Suddenly, USA, they order all those puppies, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Qatar, Emirat, to send a lot of money to Saddam Hussein. And he buy a lot of weapons. And then they told him, hey, Saddam Hussein, attack Iran. And then Saddam Hussein, like a puppy, a, 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 an idiot, a fool, he don't know what he's doing. He decide to go with it. They made him sound like a hero. He is the hero of the Arabs, so he attacked Iran. Almost nine years of war, suck all the money of Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Kuwait, and Emirate. Saddam Hussein never won. Iran never won. Why? Because America will not let anyone win. Because this is the whole point of this war. The money will go to the pocket of USA buying weapon to Saddam Hussein Saddam Hussein he used it against Iran so now we use Iran fighting Baghdad and the USA is watching in their TV all right so the outsider he might think okay this is a war between Iraq and Iran and this is a war between the Arab and the Persian and there's no war between Persian and Arab this is an <laughs> this is not even but this is just a game and those are a bunch of fools in the Middle East and because they are obsessed with their religion and they have a lot of hate religion hate Shia hate the Sunni Sunni hate the Shia you know the, the because they knew how much hate they have in their heart Iran is Shia okay Saddam Hussein was Sunni all right wonderful Hey, Saddam Hussein attack the Shia huh go for them they are the Persian suddenly Saddam Hussein start making speeches about the Persian what happened now suddenly he remembered that they are Persian and then 
they start fighting about over the name of the Gulf the Persian Gulf or the Arabian Gulf so the Arab state they call it Arabian Gulf the Iranian government they call it Persian Gulf all of this agenda igniting the the, the, the old enmity between the Persian and the Arab serving one purpose buying weapon from USA and those here those Arab are a bunch of fool and they are trapped even now if you explain it to them they can't get out of it like let us say all those leaders now they are listening to me and they notice that Christian Prince is telling them the truth but still they cannot get out of it that's it because all of those government their security and their existence is in the hand of USA you see Qatar Qatar is a country like I mean maybe the, maybe the size of my family is bigger than the population of Qatar the the, the citizen of Qatar very small Bahrain look at this country Bahrain this is the size of a building in China Kuwait when Saddam Hussein invade Kuwait the prince of Kuwait he put all his citizens imagine how many they are in hotels have you ever heard of a country the whole country can live in hotels yes because it's a small tiny population so those people their existence because their existence is fabricated they are not countries they are not countries they are fabricated countries Many of you is older than Qatar. You know what I mean? If you go right now, search when Qatar as a country was founded, you will find that you are older than Qatar itself. Same as Bahrain. Same as Kuwait. <laughs> Same as United Arab Emirates. <laughs> you see how old they are? Many of you are older than them. So those countries are just made up countries they are not really exist not even in the map small tiny population villages you know villages the British intelligence they said we will make this village a country by itself and we will make this village a country by itself and we will make this village a country by itself and the purpose is very simple anyone knows a purpose let us see who of you are thinking about the purpose if they are not real countries why they made them up anyone knows why anyone will use insult in the chat please admins if there's admins just to block him actually I will later I will block the name no problem anyone knows what is the purpose of those countries because they don't want uh, they don't want them to be one country if imagine if all those countries are one countries and they have all this money and all this oil those countries are formed after they discover the oil in them so having this country part of Saudi Arabia because the, the bigger would dominate and Qatar and Bahrain and Kuwait that will make Saudi Arabia not only the most rich country it will make it extremely powerful so now we divide them to small tiny countries and we convince each one of them that this is your borders and the rest they have to protect they have to they have to preserve your border otherwise they are your enemies so now this area is this you know is is especially look if you notice that all the area where is the oil is more division happen You know what I mean? And now they are doing the same game between here in Yemen. In Yemen, the Sunni they will control an area, and the Shia they will control an area. And Yemen will be came to Yemen as it used to be before, when the one the the original maker made made this country. They will divide them to keep them always under control. Jordan is a big country next to Israel, compared to Israel for sure. But Jordan is an empty land, dry and dead. You see, I don't know how many of you have been in those lands here. I've been in all those territory here, you know. This is dead land. 
dead, dead, whatever the word dead means, dead, it's useless. Nobody even can live in it. And Jordan is no better. Jordan, if you look at the map, this is why it's yellow. There's no nothing green. They have no oil, they have no gas, they have nothing. The only thing they have is salt from the Dead Sea. And the Dead Sea is dead. That's why it's called Dead Sea. So this country is made for one purpose. Having a big country with a small army in the border of Israel. So this country will never be a threat to Israel. So now all this border with Israel, actually, it's a shield for Israel. This country now, their job is to protect Israel from any attack from bigger countries. So now Israel, by having Jordan in this area, they are all this area is secure and they are not going to worry about it. So now they have a smaller area to protect here and here. Very complicated area, and thank God I don't live in the Middle East no more. I don't know what it does feel for many to say I am a Middle Eastern, but I know what it says, what it's mean. I am a Middle Eastern. I'm coming from the Middle East. And this is the most unsafe, insecure, and happy land in the world. This is why all the money of the rich people of those countries, it is either in USA, Swiss Bank, France, England. No money is there. So if something happened, they fly overnight to Europe and they buy their own yacht and they watch in TV what's happening in their country. You know what I mean? I don't want to use a bad language to describe where I'm coming from, but this is, in USA, they say the S-hole, S-H-hole, you know? This is exactly what it is. Anybody have some poo-poo, he go and he dump it in the Middle East. All the poo-poo of the world is dumped there. China fight USA in the Middle East. Russia fight USA in the Middle East. USA fight, uh, I mean, <laughs> the Middle East is a, like a, is the stadium of fighting. You know, and those who live there, they are, you know, they want to keep them naive, stupid, uneducated. So this is why Islam is perfect. Islam keep you stupid. They are, if you go and watch all those TVs and those stations there, what they were talking about? Is drinking camel urine better or taking medicine from made in America? Look at the topic. They are still drinking camel urine. A guy he called the sheikh and millions are watching. I ate ice cream with my fiance. Is she forbidden for me now because we ate from the same ice cream? Because Muhammad he told them supposedly that if a child he uh, do breastfeeding for from a woman, uh, the children of that woman they are forbidden for that person if he's a child. So now the guy he want to know he ate ice cream. A man he is asking the mullah live on TV. That when he was having, you know, boom, boom with his wife, he sucked her nipples and some milk dropped in his mouth. Is she forbidden for him now? Suddenly she became his mama. So this is what they are busy about. A woman, she called the sheikh. She said, when I take off my clothes, the fish in the tank, they start looking at me. The sheikh starts sweating, drinking water, and the guy with him, he, he, he gets sweat too. I mean, are, she is obviously, she is trying to seduce them. She, start, she starts saying how beautiful she is. I'm very beautiful woman. So when I take off my clothes, the, the fish, they start uh, looking at me, and they are shaking. Shaking? So the sheikh, uh, uh, sister, I advise you, sister, to take off your clothes in different room. What? Because sister, those fish, they have a genie inside them and they are looking at you and they are doing something. You want to say they are masturbating. I mean, this is what we have there and they want to keep them like this.
they want to keep them like this don't think about going to the moon don't think about revolution in technology think about being stupid and about taking your clothes off so Islam is a perfect religion to destroy your life if you remember Muhammad he said that the one who 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 have uh, agriculture uh, tools let me see if I can find the hadith give me a second Just to give you an idea what we are talking about. Muhammad, they call him a prophet. He destroyed the mentality of any human being. He want to be productive. Let us see. I'm looking for the hadith. <clears throat> anyway, what the hadith is saying, if you have any agriculture tools in your house, Allah will take it from your deeds. Allah will send you to hell. Hmm. Where is the hadith? I hate to uh, to mention something without showing it, so I better find it. So if we cannot, if the Arabs since the time of Muhammad are forbidden from using agriculture tool, who is going to feed them? By attacking their neighbors, as simple as that. This is what he told them. A force of destruction, not a force of production. I'm looking... Here we go. We found the hadith. Let us put it in the screen so you guys can understand what I'm saying. Look with me. I saw some agriculture equipment and I said, I heard and said, I heard the prophet saying, there's no house in which this equipment enters except that Allah will cause humiliation to enter it. How this nation can be better. And the funny, you will see now in Saudi Arabia, they are making farms. Supposedly they are trying, the government did notice that this is madness. I mean, so how we will, uh, the old days where we can attack the neighbors and take their money is over. How we will live? Actually, now all those countries, they have agriculture department or ministry. But Muhammad, he said, clearly, you should not have those tools. But this is showing you how this cult, it's called Islam, has a huge impact in the mindset of a human being. And again, this is why they don't want Iran regime to collapse because that will keep Iran as it is. Iran will not be the per Persian Empire as before no more. Per you know, Persia was a great nation. Great history. In every field. Actually, most of the scientists which the Arab they claim to be, they are Arab, they are Persian. I remember when I was in school, the uh, the teacher he was uh, you know we have a section speaking about Arab and uh, 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 Arab scientist Arab what scientist 
So he type on the board in a school in the classroom. Let me find his name. Al Khawarizmi. Al Khawarizmi. Okay, this is Al Khawarizmi. Supposedly he is a scientist. Let us say he is a smart ma man compared to uh, to his time. So, okay, well, this is about Arab scientists. So I asked the teacher, but what Al Khawarizmi mean? Doesn't make any sense in Arabic. He says, oh, because he's born in uh, Khawarizm. I said, okay, what is Khawarizm? He said, Iran. <laughs> so imagine they lie about scientists. They claim that they are Arab when they are Persian. This guy is a Persian scientist. Everybody know that. But in the Arabian history books, he is an Arab. 90% of those, they call them Arab scientists in our books in the Middle East, they are Persian. And this is why they don't want Iran to be something. They want it to be under Islam for Islam is the, the only thing Islam will do to Iran. If they, if, if they want to use the brain, they will use it to make weapon which is going to cause self-destruction because no matter what Iran reach as a weapon making still will be weak and is going to be very easy to destroy compared to the rest because the rest they will not even let those people there reach the point when they are superpower by their uh, nukes as an example Israel would, would demolish Iran immediately would not wait until that they come so Hypocrisy, fabricated history, lying, deception. That is what it's called politics today. Everything in the Middle East is politics. Nothing is a truthful. Nothing is real. Nothing is right. You know, and the wrong is right, and the wrong the right is wrong. Welcome to the Middle East. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. I hope we did learn something good for today. And I hope that's uh, you start, you know, I don't know, like uh, for me, I like to share how we should should look at things, you know, not in a normal way, you know, stop being uh, a person who see things as it been taught to you. Always there's something behind the scene. Always there is something uh, uh, is not, not been told. Those who they are in the media, they are not there to tell you the news. No, they are not reporting news. They are reporting an agenda and propaganda. And this is goal for all news. Those who is with and those who is against. No matter what news agency you listen to. You go right now in Google, you will find anyone speaking against Trump. His post is in the top. They favor very easy i mean even if they are not making the news but they are the one who favor titles to be in the top if you search about islam they will say they will find right away the positive things about islam in the top so this is how the news is fabricated and this is how the news is made the news most of it is not news is a propaganda so i want to say thank you for being here may the lord bless you and enter we'll see you soon again this is a christian prince was with you sharing his opinion which might be right might be wrong you don't have to agree with me about many things we see us around us in the world uh, be vigilant use the gift which God he gave you be smart and don't be somebody driven by he say she say use your mind my friend it's a gift many of us forgot about it and they decide not to use it no more don't be a fool Otherwise, everybody will make fun of you. And yes, there's many they will be happy to make fun of you and to use you and to abuse you. And if it's your choice to be a fool, that's your business. Thank you. May the Lord bless you. And I will see you soon again. Christ is Lord and everything else is false. Take care.